power of the gospel ministries preach the word indeed we here to help each other witness the truth and protect each other so we set aside ourselves so we can reach each other so let your worship cry let your praise out now let the truth of in you release that holy shout Hey, 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 Lady K, how you doing? You all right? I'm good. I'm good, Reverend Red. How you doing? Right. Welcome. Well, I'd like to welcome our listening audience to Power Left, another episode that's coming up that's going to bless, that's going to inform, that's going to elevate you, edify you with testimonies and stories and just entrepreneurs and singers and all that we got going on here in Powerless. You know how we do it, Lady K. We got some Absolutely. great guests. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so today's been a great day in Dallas. Lady K, I got something to tell you. You ready for this? I don't know if I'm ready. This, this is this is absolutely funny. You know, my car was in the, in the shop for hail damage. Yes. Okay, so I went and picked it up today. Yes. Cleaned it up and on the way home, Right? Why is it called Halen? No, it didn't. <laughs> no, it did not. Made it to the garage just in time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. <laughs> Lord Same day Jesus. I and I went to the car wash, I had it all clean up, so I'm going to beat this rain. I thought it was going to rain. I got to come to put it in the garage, all that. As soon as I turn in the apartment, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> but to God be the glory. We just like to want to welcome our listening audience to Power Lift. You know, this is how we do it. We have a guest tonight that we are going to meet. I'm going to meet for the first time, but we're just going to have a good time. We're going to hear some great testimonies. Amen. We're going to, hey, stay tuned. They're going to drop some nuggets, some, some diamonds, you know, whatever it is that's going to help you. You know, so please stay tuned. Pull up a chair. Let's listen. Let's get let's get that going. Amen. So let us pray, Lady K, and we're going to get um, everything going. All right, Heavenly Father, we come. We thank you, Father God, for this day, this time, and our Father God. We thank you, Father God, for your goodness, grace, mercy, and favor, Father God. We thank you for your love, Father God. I thank you personally, Father God, for traveling grace to my wife and my mother-in-law, Father God, as they go over the airways and the highways and the byways, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Protect them, keep them safe, Father God, till they come back home, Father God. Father God, we thank you for our listening audience. We pray that you would bless them, you would keep them, Father God. You would give them a mind to receive, a mind to be uplifted and elevated on today by what they will hear on Power Lift, Father God. We thank you for our producer, Jerry Royce, Father God, and every Power Lift show, Father God. The Power Lift, Power 21 Nation, Father God. We pray for every show, everyone that's on there, Father God, that they will be blessed, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, we thank you and we bless you. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray. We say amen, amen, and... Amen again. I'm super, super excited to be on the air with you tonight, Reverend Reb. And, amen. you know, it held here. But we didn't get caught up in the storm. Tell them where you are. Oh, right now I'm in Branson, Missouri. I've been in Atlanta, Georgia, and we'll be going to Kansas City, Missouri um, tomorrow. We, we be, we've even been in Arkansas. Okay. So we are, <laughs> we're excited. We are traveling. We had an amazing, um, I was at an amazing conference called All Things Purpose in Atlanta, Georgia, and then we will be going to the Art of Spiritual Warfare in Kansas City, Missouri. It is going to be a phenomenal conference hosted by our guest tonight, Dr. Jackie Hadnot, and we'll get into all of that in a few minutes, but we have just been traveling, we've been Ubering, we've been on trains and planes so okay we have had a great time my mom is one of my greatest supporters so she has Amen. been selling um books she, she was my help you know lugging stuff through the airport and just we've <laughs> we've had a great time Amen. have you missed me 
Yeah, I, I guess so. I'm, I'm great friends with the, with the people at McDonald's and Wingstop. They know oh. me by name now. Wow. Well, that is great. Well, you know, let me do my announcement so we can jump in and get to our amazing guest because she is just phenomenal. So, you know, power lifters, we're glad that you're here. You're listening. We need you to lean into your listening devices and don't leave because you are going to get some power nuggets tonight. You know, we ask you to go to powerofthegospel.org. If you want to donate to the Mighty Kings, you can do it there. You want to donate to ministry, Power of the Gospel Ministries, you can do it there. You can check out and get more information about Reverend Red and Lady K from there. Also, you know, I need you to go to crystalhenry.net. Remember, that's crystal with the K. And check out the amazing books, Made to Lead Millions, Made to Lead Millions Mandate, The Elements of You. Get your book today. And then if you are looking to get coaching classes, hey, I have some amazing online classes. Go to the training tab on my website. If you're looking to join us October 12th through the 16th, this this October 2023, and you want to go on the Wealth Cruise with us, we have a cabin with your name on it. So go to crystalhenry.net and join us, not just a cruise, but a conference at sea. You'll get information if you are a speaker, an author, a leader, or an entrepreneur, or inspiring to be a speaker, leader, entrepreneur, or author. Go to made to lead millions cruise.com or crystalhenry.net to get that cruise information. If you're looking to be a certified life coach or you need help with interviews, such as what I'm doing right now, interviewing people. Um, if you want to kill it in media, then check out my media interview packaging. So all of that is on the website. Those are our announcements for now, and I just want to introduce our amazing guest. Are you ready, Reverend Red? I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Well, we want to welcome this phenomenal woman of God. I don't know if there's anything that she has not done. She's a minister of the gospel. She's an empowerment speaker. She's a life and business coach, amazing author, keynote speaker, television host, serial entrepreneur. I cannot wait. She also does um, cologne and perfume. She has a cologne and perfume line. So I cannot wait till I get my um, perfume. Uh, and she does so much more TV and radio. She has a blog, prayer, is her thing, and she is hosting the conference, The Art of Spiritual Warfare, that I will be at tomorrow, starting tomorrow. So I need everybody to put their hands together and welcome none other than Dr. Jackie Hadnot. All right. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm laughing. Who is she talking about? <laughs> I'm fine. How is how are you doing? How are you both doing? Great, hey, great. You know, I, I just got I have a complaint, Dr. Hadnock. What's your you complaint do? already? Well, um, I I was trying to start a business, but seem like you do you got more. Ain't nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> I got some room. I thought I was about to interview about eight or nine different people on here. I was like, wow. <laughs> so the, the, question, the question I want to ask is, when do you sleep? <laughs> A lot and very well. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So I, I, I want to ask you, um, you know, if you listen to my show, I always goes go way back. 
when at, when you were younger, what did you have a dream of or, or a mindset to do or be? With say middle school, high school, what was your mindset at that time? Were you thinking entrepreneur? Or were you thinking a model? Or you were thinking of a sports athlete or a singer? What was you? What were you? What was your mindset at that time? Honestly, my mindset was being a <laughs> was getting as much trouble as I possibly could. Okay. But when I got to like high you. school, felt like you. When I got to high school, I I wanted to be a beautician, but I couldn't because I couldn't. I had asthma. Then I wanted to be an accountant, so that's what I went to college for. Okay, okay, like my wife to be an, be an accountant. Okay, so what what college did you go to? Uh, Park University here in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay, shout out, shout out to Park University, right? <laughs> shout out to Park University. So, with the accounting um, degree that you got, would you after you got it, were you just not interested, or God just led you another way, or showed you something else? I spent twenty eight years in the accounting field in the in the accounting industry as well as a, a professor of accounting for a few years. But nice. in the interim, I got, I, I was diagnosed with tumors in my head. And after about 28 years, it began to weigh on me. So God told me it was time to retire from that. And I did. Amen. I retired. Amen. Amen. I was always I'm still in ministry though. I stayed in I've always been in ministry for twenty some years, but I just retired from the accounting profession. Amen. Amen. You know, and I, and I and I love that you share that early because our listening audience, when they look at the success of people and what people are doing now, they think that well, they haven't been through nothing. It's been easy, easy walk. They had everything good, but when they hear you know, stories like that, testimonies like that. That's what Powerlift is all about. You know, it's not because we have the perfect guest on here is to say, okay, how did she get there? That's why I always like to go back. You know, we we even talk about what you're doing now, but I like to go back to see the story because people know that, okay, yes, I've been through this. I'm like even my wife, been through cancer, been through this. It's like you said, you've been through all that and look where God had you and look what God is doing with you. So as a youth, let me share something with you because a lot of, you know, young ladies, young men too, um, like you said, getting in trouble or looking for trouble. What was your biggest challenge as a young lady coming up, say in your teens, what was your biggest challenge? My biggest challenge was being an orphan because both oh, my wow. parents died. My dad died when I was 10. My mother died when I was 15. And my biggest wow. challenge was trying to, living, having a reason to live. You know, wow. when you don't have parents, you don't have someone that's, I had a wonderful grandfather that, you know, he took care of us. But when you don't have somebody to push you, you have to yes. push yourself. And wow. you have to make sure that you keep yourself out of as much, as much trouble as I got in. You know, I never went to jail or any of that stuff. I was just, I was just out there searching and I didn't have, for a long time, I didn't have purpose because my life was just, you know, thrown into chaos. You know, after, especially after my mother died, we were uprooted from the only home I knew. And, you know, my brothers and I, and what was more traumatic than anything was that we found our mother dead. So everything just went haywire in our lives. And we had to really try to navigate just finding a reason to live. If, if that makes any sense, you got to find, you got to have makes, hope when there is no hope. That makes a lot of sense. Dr. Husband, you don't know how much you bless, you bless me. So I know you're blessing our listening audience. You know, I, that is, that is absolutely awesome because you know that y'all, you, you, you ever hear the saying, you don't look like what you've been through. Mm, you know, come on. When, when people hear this story right now, and I'm glad you're sharing it on power lift. I, I am I am so glad and I have so much just early in the show I have so much respect for you now and that I meet I'm meeting you my wife already know you but I'm meeting you for the first time and I have so much respect for you now to see where you are what you're doing and you didn't let your situation hold you down and hinder you and thank you so much okay go ahead Lady K 
Excellent, excellent. So, Dr. Hadnot, when when um, they found tumors in your brain, was it cancerous tumors or? Nope. That time it was, I've had three surgeries. Mm. And each time they were benign, I had them at the base of my brain and at the top of my brain. And one was on my right eye and they took the right eye out. Said it was oh, non-cancerous, but they expected that I would lose my eyesight, but I mm. didn't. But, you know, it, it was a challenge because I, I lost my memory. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, come on. Wow. wow. So how long did it take for you to regain your memory? Right. It took a while. It, you know, bits and pieces came back. And at some point, some of it never came back. Mm. But I was just but I would press to keep my, my mind going, keep my mind straight, keep my mind moving, mm -hmm. and just be able to get how, you know, I took care of myself. Yes, yes, wow. You know, that is phenomenal because literally, like my husband said, you don't look like what you have been through. Mm -hmm. You don't sound like what you have right. been through. And right. that is phenomenal. Um, my question mm -hmm. to you is, Going through all of that, when did your ministry begin? The ministry really began between my fifth, my fifth and sixth surgeries. Mm. After they took one, they, after they took one tumor out of my breast and two out of my head, mm. God asked me, "What do you want to do with your life?" And I said, "I want." This was 1999, and mm. I said, "I wanted to." I want to teach your word. And he opened up my mind to the possibilities of teaching his word. So I went to college and I became like this sponge for the word of God. I mean, just sponging and sponging and sponging. And that's when I learned the intimacy with God. I learned worship. I learned prayer. I learned, I mean, I would always been in church, but mm -hmm. I learned, I learned who he is. Mm. And that's when for me, he said, what do you want to do with your life? Because I was in the middle of twisting between two surgeries. And like the doctor said, when he got ready to operate on my head, he said, if I go to the left, you'll be a vegetable. He said, if I go to the right, too far to the right, you'll die. Because they were wow. that, literally that, that close to my brain trying to get these things out. And mm. I said, don't worry about it. God's got it. And literally he did. Mm. Wow. My God. You know, that is what I call sharing, sharing in the suffering with Christ Jesus. He has mm -hmm. that resurrection power and he allowed you to get up and get up and keep getting up. So I thank God that Jesus has preserved you um, for us. For us, because many people need to hear your testimony. Many people need to hear um, about getting up and and getting over and getting through. So thank you so much for just being so candid and sharing your story, um, your life with us and with our listeners. Um, one more question before I pass it back to Reverend Red. Um, you're also a breast cancer survivor. Um, and I know that's recent. Um, how, after having multiple brain surgeries and you had already had a breast surgery, now, how yeah. <laughs> how did you handle this? The diagnosis of breast cancer. I fell out on the floor and had a temper tantrum. Yeah, <laughs> I know you did. I know you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Did you? <laughs> I, I fell out on the temper tantrum. I I screamed and, and beat the bed and beat the floor and said, Noah, don't you know I've been through all these surgeries already? What? Why? But this wow. time it was, after all those other surgeries, this one was the one that had cancer in it. Mm. And this one changed everything. And I had a very aggressive form of breast cancer. And they just said that when they did all the tests, that they said that we believe it spread throughout your body already. Because mm. of what we think. And I said, really? He said, we think it's already spread. Mm. And it's now, what, spread. Kind, said, what kind did you have? I had breast cancer, lymph node cancer. I uh, also had HER2 positive cancer, and there was something else in there. Wow. And 
but it was it spread to the lymph nodes, mm-hmm. and it didn't spread any other place where, where they thought it had spread to like the livers and kidneys. Mm-hmm. It wasn't in any places. It was only in the lymph nodes. Praise God! And, Praise God! And they even they even said that it was the cancer was so severe that they didn't know how to treat it. Mm. That's See, the doctor's exact words. Now, when they did a case study on my breast cancer. Because I, at, in December, um, I had nothing. There was no visible sign of cancer. Um, I had just had my mammogram. And on Valentine's, I found the, the lump. And by the time I was able to get into the doctor, it had grown to the size of a marble. So they, it was growing at 83%. And so they could, they, they went back and looked at the mammogram again and again. They came back. They kept going back. The doctor came out and apologized to me. The, the um, radiologist came out and apologized to me because they didn't see it, you know, and it wasn't there. So I understand when they're seeing something and they're saying this is huge or we don't know how to treat it. We don't know which way to go. Mm-hmm. That meant that, that it had to be God to save you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad. Look, I'm glad you were here. And um, how long have you been cancer free? Three years, April the 7th. <laughs> Three years, April the 7th. Amen. Congratulations, congratulations. I'm at 13 years and I'm excited too. Reverend Red, tell us how many years you are cancer free. Three years. Three years. Well, Praise God. April will be four. So April, no, no, it's four years. 2019, okay. four years. So praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, praise the Lord. Now, well, we can even, we trying to get to what you're doing right now, all the stuff that you're doing. And it's so hard to get there because your testimony of your, you need, we need a Netflix episode with you, like eight episodes. <laughs> <laughs> you, there's so much. Your Somebody needs to do a movie. <laughs> yeah. Somebody do a movie and pay me, please. Right. We need yeah, to be paid. That's just mind boggling. You know, and I just I just thank God for you. And I thank God that you're willing to share those testimonies and, and live in proof that you know you can't let things like that stop you. You still have to have that mindset. Now the the other mindset I want to ask you about is the mindset of an entrepreneur. You know, because I've talked to people, and something I've said it myself. Well, you know, starting a business is such a, it's too much trouble. You have to get that. You have to get this. I don't really want the stress of starting a business because when you really start a business, you lose money the first year or two years or three years, and there's a battle. What would you share with someone that has that mindset or thinking like that? That want to start a business but just don't want to go through the battle and the stress of dealing with the problem in this situation, the battle of, of starting the business? You know, being an entrepreneur is one of the most exciting times in a person's life. Yes, it's going to be a struggle, but hey, you got a struggle on the job. Yes, it's going to be challenging, but you got challenges on the job. Yes, it's going to be sleepless nights, but you got sleepless nights on the job. So what's the difference? Would you rather work for somebody making eighteen dollars an hour or would you rather work mm. for yourself and make a hundred and eighty dollars an hour? It's a mm. few. You may not get that hundred and eighty overnight, but you can if you do it right, you can grow your business whew, in leaps and bounds and never miss a beat. Because I would much rather wait and get the hundred and eighty dollars an hour than to take somebody's crap and only be making eighteen dollars an hour when I know my full potential. So if you believe in yourself and you believe in the potential that you have within you, hey, take the risk and do the eighteen and take the hundred and eighty dollars an hour. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. A lot of sense. Now, let, let me ask you this now. On 
like when starting a business, you know, you need money, right, to start a business. Now, do you, would you suggest uh, a loan, a business loan, a government loan? Uh, what would you suggest to someone that wants to start a business loan? I would suggest two things. So, uh, first of all, I would tell a person that has no money to get some skin in the game by looking around your house and seeing what you have in your house that you can utilize. You can have a garage sale. You can go on, uh, what's that other thing? Uh, marketplace. Sell the stuff in your house you're not using. Put that money in an interest-bearing account and let that money mm -hmm. start growing for you. Then I would say take that money, go and get someone to help you write a grant, get a grant for your business, and then if you really want to navigate it and you need a loan, build up as much capital as you can Go to your bank, put that money in a CD certificate of deposit, and then borrow against it so that your money is in the bank earning interest while you're borrowing the money, the bank's money, and you're building credibility with your bank. Okay. 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 I was listening to the audience. I hope y'all are hearing this because y'all are getting this for free. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, free, absolutely. Free on top of it. Man, that is, that is good because a lot of people, I guarantee you, a lot of people didn't, didn't know that. And that, now that I'm hearing it, it, that makes so much sense. That that makes so much sense. So the, say the, the, the first part of your entrepreneurship, your business, the loss that you have that business, that's it. That's it. Oh, hold on for a minute. Let me get away from this microwave. Uh, say that one more okay. time for me, please. Yeah, you're going in and out a little bit, Reverend Red. Um, okay. Like I said, the the first year or two years of your business, um, when you lose money, that's a tax write-off, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So that's up to know to file tax and all that and a tax write-off. Okay. All right. All right. Well, that's it. That's the man. That's I learned. I learned something. We learned something right there on, on that segment. Absolutely. Absolutely beautiful. That's beautiful. Now, now, later, had not. Just want to make sure before you leave tonight, you want to give. Um, we're going to give you an opportunity to share your website, your social media, how someone can get to your coaching, whatever you have. We're going to give you that time, so be prepared for that to share that with our listening audience. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead, yeah, Lady okay. Okay, I can ask my question. Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Hadnot, you have written many books. So can you give us um, some of the books that you have written and how that is coming into play right now with what is about to start happening tomorrow? Oh, yes, sir, Coach Crystal. Absolutely. Well, from November the 5th to February 5th, about February, November 5th to February 5th, March 5th, I went through the flu, the bronchitis, and then I ended up with COVID. So for that 120 days, I stayed in the house and I wrote. I literally wrote 16, I revised four books and wrote another 10 books, 11 books on the art of spiritual warfare, different variations of the subject of spiritual warfare. Wow. So I, I wrote those books so that I could cover every aspect of, you know, spiritual warfare, like taking authority over your spiritual house, Come spiritual on. warfare, and exposing witchcraft in the church, mm. destroying spiritual breaches, demolishing the poverty spirit that's wage, raging against God's people, uh, the warfare for your prayer life. I wrote uh, prayers for expect, effective spiritual warfare. And then I wrote Spiritual Warfare in the Marketplace, Soul Ties That Bind, Strategies for Spectacular Warfare, and several others. But I wrote them all in the matter of about 120 days because I was stuck in the house and I needed something to do. Amen. I'm bored. Amen. <laughs> that is amazing. That's phenomenal how God used you in that amount of time, even in the midst of being sick. So praise God for that. And so after you finished writing, then what did God do and say? He said, I want you to birth the spiritual warfare conference. And he said, I want you to teach my people 
how to wage war because my people don't know how to fight. Woo! That's that, what is, I did. that is good. So in the next three days, you are going to be teaching. You've gathered up a group of um, amazing warrior strategists that will help you in reaching the body of people that will be at this boot camp. So tell us in, can, can, if somebody hears about it and they say, I can make it to Kansas, can they get a ticket tonight? Absolutely. They can go to eventbrite.com and look up Art of Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp, or they can just come to the door and register at the door. Oh, that's awesome. So we're going to be at Four Points Sheraton, right, in Kansas yes. City, Missouri. Um, by the so airport. By the airport. So they can meet us right there. I, I cannot wait to get there tomorrow. Um, and so tell us, you know, some of the, I know I'm teaching warfare in the mandate. Give me a couple of things that I know you're teaching several times. So give me a couple of your teachings. I'm going to be teaching on uh, sexual soul ties and how to break them. Ooh. I'm going to be, yeah, sexual, <laughs> yeah, I know. Kind of a weird subject, yes. No, <laughs> but it needs to be so. Yeah, sexual soul ties and how to break them, uh, destroying spiritual breaches, and prophetic witchcraft in the church. Dr. Trita Brown is going to be teaching on destroying the poverty spirit and spiritual warfare in the marketplace. Mm, well, we are going to have a phenomenal time in Kansas City tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. So if you can make it out, y'all, come to Kansas City. It is going to be worth your while. It's going to be an amazing, amazing boot camp and just a place to really learn. So can I touch on, I want to touch on um, some of the other things that you are doing like, how did you get into the body care, the colognes, and the perfumes? I got into it by <laughs> by having eczema. Mm. I had a skin a skin problem that needed a solution, mm. and so I made the decision to learn how to make soap. And so mm. I started off making soap. And then God, one day I was holding the bar of soap, and God said, I'm going to bless what's in your hands. And I wow. looked at the bar of soap, and I said, you're going to do what? He said, I'm going to bless what's in your hands. I said, God, this is a bar of soap. And I kind of looked up at the sky and said, you're going to bless a bar of soap? And sure enough, within 90 days of that, I had my first commercial location. Within 90 days of moving into that commercial location, I had five high V grocery stores here in the Midwest, which is the ninth largest grocery chain in the Midwest. Mm. And from there, it just kept growing and it kept growing. And then I ended up with products on Amazon and it just kept moving and God kept blessing. And now I'm in, I've navigated after it's a, the business thrived in cancer, thrived in through cancer, thrived through COVID because when COVID hit and nobody had hand sanitizers, my company was making hand sanitizers for all these places in Kansas City. Wow. So God kept, God kept navigating. And then when I came out of cancer, he put me, I took the perfumery side of the business because I make perfumes and colognes. Mm -hmm. And he sent me to the Hamptons where I met you, Coach Crystal. Yes. And <laughs> perfume business just took off from there. So I've been doing perfumes for uh, women that want to launch into the, a $30 billion industry. I've been doing perfumes for celebrities, uh, reality star uh, people. You'd be surprised mm -hmm. at the people I've been making perfumes for. And it's just been amazing. Wow. That is incredible. That's incredible. And don't you have a TV show or station or something? Yes. Oh, and because I was told by this guy at a, at a shopping network that they didn't like to, they didn't like to feature black businesses with their products because he said black businesses brought many made products. 
Mm. And I didn't take offense to it, and I couldn't sue him because he is black. But he said mm-hmm. that's why their network didn't have black products because black folks brought Natty made products. So I didn't take offense. I took authority. Okay. And when I took authority, my husband said, he said, let's just start our own network. So we have finished the all of the layout for the Kingdom Shopping Network, and we're going to feature – some of our clients with the perfumes and other businesses. If you're a kingdom business and kingdom minded, we'll put you on the kingdom shopping network. But yeah, he said, we made mammy made products. And I set out to prove him a lie. Mm. Yes, it is. I set out to prove that he's a lie. Because the products that people we work with are all top quality businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so that is phenomenal. Whew. You've had albums, right? You've you've have you sung and played in, um, instruments? Now I only play for an audience of one, mm, and that's okay. and that's the Lord. But I play guitar, but I only ah, play for an audience of one. And I've made four, I made four. I made four four music CDs. I write. I produce. We have our own studio, and so. I just do what God tells me to. Reverend Red, you there? I know I've taken over. (laughs) Yeah, you're you're going in and out. We can barely hear you. Can you? Can you? Now we can hear you. Okay. I said I am. I'm over here trying to find dates when we can have her to come back. To get all this other stuff done because we can't we can't do this in one show. So, um, Sister had not. Let me ask you this now: Is there something right now in your life that you you haven't done, or you wish you had done, or you still have dreams to accomplish? Now, or you don't feel you don't check every box so far. Is there a box that's left? that you were like, man, I would really like to do this or accomplish this. If there is there one more thing that you want to do or two or three. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I, one of the things I want to do is I want to, I want to make a movie. Okay. okay. I want to make a movie. I want to, I want to tell the story of a little girl who, who basically nobody believed in that rose to do all that God called her to do. I want to tell the story of her, her life. I want to, I want her to die on empty, pouring out everything that she's ever, ever dreamed of doing for people. I want to take trucks on the, on the road again. That's another thing. And I want to go back into little towns like I was raised in. And I want to feed all the people and help them to come out of poverty. Those are the things I want to do. That's two things I want to do. Okay, that, that, is, that is absolutely beautiful. Now, um, here's another question I'm going to ask you. Who, what actress would play you, like, in your, in your, in, in your adult life? Who, who, who'd you like to play your role? Angela Bassett. Oh, get out of here. That's my girl right there. She, she do everything good. <laughs> Angela Bassett, she needs to play me. Okay. <laughs> that, 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 that's a good That's good. Okay. I want Angela Bassett to play me. Okay, that's good. Now I'm I'm putting in my request right now. If you need a crazy preacher in your in your movie, you can call me, okay? I got you. I got you. Trust me. Yeah, I, I got you. For sure, for sure. Now, um, later had not, it's 841. We're going to go ahead and give you this time right now to share with our listening audience everything about you, how they can get in touch with you, how they can follow you, your social media, your website, how they can sign up and just you know, learn all about you and the dates of your what you have in, in Kansas City, where you are. If it, if you share those dates okay. also. So go ahead. You have, you have the mic. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I'd like to invite everyone to the Art of Spiritual Warfare Boot Camp because it's not too late to attend. We start t- t- Friday night, April the 21st through the 23rd. That's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
here in Kansas City, Missouri at the Four Point Sheraton Hotel, 11832 Northwest Plaza Circle, Kansas City, Missouri. It's only five minutes from the airport. You can drive in, fly in, take a train, or take a bus. And if you come, if you say that you heard it on this radio broadcast, we will give you half off the registration okay. fee and still provide you with your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We'll have any, all of your food costs will be covered. And just mention this broadcast and mention the crazy preacher. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. Yeah. And you'll get half of your registration fee, and you'll be entitled to all of the, the benefits that everyone uh, that, that's attending. You get all the benefits, the survival warfare kits. You'll get your uh, certificate of completion for the training. You'll get all of the gifts and prizes and even participate in the Lunch and Learn. If you want people to learn about your business, your business idea, your vision, your ministry, your church, going to get a to do a pitch about your business so you'll get to participate in everything and if you want to know more about me you can visit jackiehatnot.com j-a-c-q-u-i-e-h-a-d-n-o-t.com you can also find me on facebook instagram but don't go to instagram because i don't ever go to instagram but if you go to facebook you can find me out there uh, or you can go to mally's house mally's house.org that's the transitional home that we have for women that I started for women that are going through cancer and are homeless. That was the other part of my dream is to help all the women that are homeless and going through cancer have a place to live. I want to make that, take that across the world to help all the women. And that's it. That's pretty much, that's me. That's it. Anybody, anybody you want to shout out to? Relatives? Anybody? I want to shout out to everybody. Hi, everybody. Okay, everybody. Let's cover everything. <laughs> Let's cover everybody. 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 I want to cover everybody. Everybody is happy. Hey, Dr. Trina Brown. Okay. <laughs> now, um, the, the question I want to ask you: Do you say you play the guitar? Do you do you sing also? Can you? I don't know if I would call what I do singing. So we're gonna okay. leave that alone. So me, 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 and you kind of roll together in that, huh? We just kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we skipped that line when God was giving our blessing. I don't know. I didn't. I couldn't find where that line was. Vocal cords. Yeah, I miss. I miss that line. <laughs> we miss that line. <laughs> now, now, let, me, let me ask you this now. Um, uh, I want to go back to the COVID year in the, in the twenty twenty. One of my last questions is um, how did that affect you or did it affect you negatively? Did it affect you positively in that year? Did you, did you, did you, did you do something or accomplish something that you will always remember or did it hurt you in a way that you will always remember being shut down starting in March of 2020 for the whole year? Ooh, to me, COVID, <laughs> honestly, I was fighting cancer. I didn't care about COVID. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. okay. That was, COVID was just like over there. That was that's for, that's for the other folks. I'm fighting cancer, so we good. Okay, we all good in the hood up in here. So. Okay. Okay. All I, yeah, I learned some great things during COVID because I was fighting cancer. I went to when when folks were worried about what to do in the house. I was in film school, learning how to write, produce, and direct. Uh, Movies, TV. I went to film school. Okay, so you did some. You your, that year was productive for you then. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. That's what I want to hear. Yeah, because you know some people just always say, "Well, COVID hurt us." You know, I went down, didn't do nothing, didn't accomplish nothing. That is absolutely amazing. Once again, that's another testimony that you can't just use a situation to not be productive and not learn and not better yourself. Even with all that was going on, you still was getting knowledge and gaining knowledge. Yes, you you have a fan right here. I know Sister Crystal already loves you, and she's yeah. already a fan. But you can you can you can add my name, Reverend Red, and in Corinthians says, "Put the crazy preacher from Dallas." Okay, <laughs> yeah, and add me, add, add me, add me, add me to your fan page. Okay, Lady Cam, pass it over to you. Well, you know, I am excited. I am so blessed that you made it to power lift to give yeah. us a little bit of your story your testimony 
Um, I am just so powered up and I'm super excited to get on the road to get to Kansas tomorrow. And I look for everybody that is coming to the Art of Spiritual Warfare boot camp. Get ready for it. Put your boots on because I'm definitely going to be hollering left, 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 right, left. (laughs) And I can't wait to get my sword. So I'm super excited to get my sword. You have... I know filled up the swag bags with oil, swords, everything to spiritually win every battle, every enemy, every spiritual enemy that comes against us and our families. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for showing us um, that it's possible Um, Where much is given, much is required, much more is required. And so you're not letting anything stop you. And I love the fact that every time there has been some type of illness, some type of illness as far as warfare against you, you come out not only out of the illness, but you come out um, with a new ministry, a new business, uh, a new level <laughs> of authority. So thank you for showing us that in your testimony, that nothing Amen. and no one should hold us back. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Coach. Absolutely. Absolutely awesome. Is that is that what you had, Lady K? Yep, that's it. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I, I, I do have I do have something else that um I want to ask um later had not. Um have you ever been to Texas, Dallas? Yes, I have an uncle and some cousins that live there. Okay. In in Dallas or just in the state of Texas somewhere? And they live in Dallas. In Dallas, okay. Okay. Well mm-hmm. make sure whenever you whenever you come through you, you make sure you holler at Crystal. We got some nice places you can take her to eat. Ooh, yummy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, and you know, you know, I'm Jamaican, so I know, I know all the good Jamaican restaurants too. You, you like Jamaican food? I've tried it, and yes, I do. <laughs> okay, like I, I got some for you. You know, I was going to shock you tonight and come up with my Jamaican twang, like "Good, mm-hmm. good evening, girl. What y'all talk about tonight? We are Miss Hard Not Pun the Phone." <laughs> <laughs> That would work too. I, I, <laughs> I told you I was crazy. Mm. But no, I, um, but once again, we, we just thank you. And I, I'll ask you one last favor, just to have not. After the thing is okay. over, the boot camp is over this weekend, could you could you tell my wife to hurry and come home because her husband is, is, is tired of eating at McDonald's? Oh. Okay. <laughs> could you do that? Uh, do that for me? I, I, might have to stay. I might have to stay some extra days in Kansas. I don't know about that. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. Been um, home since I had not. Yeah. I, I, hey, she got to go I, home. I, I, say it again. She got to go home. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't open an account at McDonald's. They just put it on my account when I pull up there. <laughs> you got but stock in anyway. McDonald's? Yes. <laughs> but Lord, anyway, Dad, we we thank you so much. You are an absolutely beautiful um queen, a beautiful minister, a beautiful lady of the gospel, entrepreneur. You have so much wisdom and so many nuggets and um for those that's listening on Powerlift, I Lady K, you can say they what they probably got what one point two percent of her of all the knowledge that she has, that she could right. share with you. Right. Yes. yes. So make sure you go and follow her. Make sure you keep up what she's doing, you know, so um, so you will learn. You know, I always love hanging around wisdom. So I want to thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your time. Thank you for honoring us once again um, on Powerlift. And once I, what I was saying, Lady K, she gives our show what? Validity? Validity, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> A powerful young lady like her on the show 
thank you so much. I want to thank Jerry Ross once again for making it happen. Now, our producer, you know, Positive Power 21, um, the nation, you know, once again, making it happen. So with that being said, Lady K, I don't know what you're doing next Thursday, but the same bad time. The same bad channel. With the same Batman, Jerry, Jerry Boy. <laughs> we will be here. So join us. We want to say good night to our listening audience. God bless you. We want to say good night and much thanks to our guests on tonight. Be blessed, and we thank you. To, and we, are, we are honored to have you on here. So y'all have a great night. Have a great day. God bless you guys. And hey, stay out of the hail. Please stay out of the hail. <laughs> <laughs> God, God bless. bless. Yes. Thanks, Dr. Hadnot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you now. Bye bye. bye. How I live, living in faithful truth. John 8 and 32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Power to lift you up, power to set you free. We need a power lift, the truth will set you free. Living in faith with truth, receive the word you need. Power of the gospel ministries, preach the word indeed. We here to help each other, witness the truth and protect each other. So we set aside ourselves so we can reach each other. So let your worship cry, let your praise out. Now let the truth up in you, release that holy shout. You are listening to Gear Slide Worldwide Podcast.